Welcome to Edupedia World. In this video, we will discuss the statistical errors and the sources of secondary data. Statistical errors. There is a great difference in the meaning of mistake and error in statistics. Mistake means a wrong calculation or use of inappropriate method in the collection or analysis of data. Error means the difference between the true value and the estimated value. In other words, the difference between the approximated, that means estimated value, and the actual value, that means true value, is called statistical error in a technical sense. For example, we make an estimation that in a particular meeting, thousand persons are there. But we count persons, it may be wrongly counted as 1030. There is a difference of 30 between the estimated value and counted value. The difference is called error in statistics. But when we make wrong calculation, following wrong method, draw wrong conclusions, etc., they are known as mistake. For example, there is a meeting, we sent a person to count the audience. He counts the number of person as 600 but actually there are 590 persons. This is called mistake in counting. Sources of errors. Following errors are likely to occur in collection of data. First, errors of origin. Errors arise on account of inappropriate definition of statistical unit, scale, or defective questionnaire, etc. For example, Wrong scale to measure height of students, measured height to nearest of inch or approximated. The difference may also occur due to differences in measuring tapes due to manufacturing defect. In physics or chemistry, such error of measurement will occur while taking readings on various instruments. Second error, error of inadequacy. Errors arise on account of incomplete data, inadequate number of items in the sample, non-response of respondent, incomplete answers in questionnaire, misinterpretation of questions in questionnaire, careless or unqualified investigators, etc. Third, errors of calculation. Such errors arises because of wrong arithmetic calculation. Due to clerical errors, arithmetic slips, etc. By omitting some figures, considering wrong value, making wrong totals, etc. By respondent or investigator. And the last error, errors of interpretation. Such errors are committed by statisticians for misinterpreting the data. Now we come to types of errors. First, absolute and relative errors. Absolute error is the difference between the actual true value and estimated approximate value, while relative error is the ratio of absolute error to the approximated value. The mathematical formula for absolute error is absolute error equals to actual value minus estimated value. And the formula for relative error is actual value minus estimated value divided by estimated value. Let us take one example. Sales of commodity approximated rupees 497 and actual sale is rupees 500. So the absolute error will be 500 minus 497 that is 3. And relative error will be 500 minus 497 divided by 500 it will come 3 by 500 and the value will be 0 0.006 relative error can also be represented in percentage then uh, it will be 3 by 500 multiply by 100 it will come 0 0.6 percent relative error is generally used in statistical calculations because absolute error gives wrong or misleading calculations. Now we come to second type of error that is biased and unbiased errors. Biased errors arise due to some prejudice or bias in the mind of investigator 
or the informant or any measurement instrument. Suppose the enumerator use the deliberate sampling method in place of simple random sampling method, then it is called biased error. These errors are cumulative in nature and increase when the sample size also increases. Biased errors arise due to faulty process of selection, faulty work during the collection of information and faulty method of analysis. Unbiased errors are not the result of any prejudice or bias. They are those which arise accidentally just on account of chance in the normal course of investigation. Unbiased errors are generally compensating. And the third type of error is sampling and non-sampling errors. The errors arising on account of drawing inferences about the population on the basis of few observations are called sampling errors. The errors mainly arising at the stages of ascertainment and processing of data are called non-sampling errors. They are common both in census enumeration and sample surveys. To avoid these errors, the statisticians must take proper precautions and care in using the correct measuring instrument. He must see that the enumerators are also not biased. Unbiased errors can be removed with proper planning of statistical investigations. Statisticians should have none of these errors. Sources of secondary data. There are various sources and organizations through which statistical data are being compiled in India. Since India achieved independence, great and rapid strides have been made in the field of collection of data. In the context of economic planning, importance of statistics in the country has become great. Statistics are necessary for framing and judging the progress of economic planning. The study of Indian statistics is made under following head. First, Statistical Organization of India that is CSO, Indian Statistical Material. This can be studied under the following sections. Agriculture Statistics, Population Statistics, Price Statistics, Trade Statistics, Labor Statistics, National Income and Social Accounting, National Sample Survey, industrial statistics and financial statistics there are some agencies both at the national and state level which collect process and tabulate statistical data some important major agencies at the national level are census of india national sample survey organization that is nsso labor bureau central statistical organization that is cso Registrar General of India, RGI, Director General of Commercial Intelligence and Statistics, DGCIS, etc. First, we will discuss Census of India. India had the unique experience of undertaking the biggest census in the world in 1981 and has also an unbroken record of more than 100 years of decadal censuses. The Indian census is universally acknowledged as most authentic and comprehensive source of information about our land and people. In 1869, Hunter was appointed Director General of Statistical Surveys. He not only elaborated the statistical system but also assisted the statistical surveys of districts and provinces. That latter followed into famous gazetteers. He advised in conducting of Census of India, which undertook explanatory surveys from 1869 to 1872 and thereafter matured into a decennial census which ever since continued without interruption. After 1872, the next census was taken in 1881 and since then it has become a regular feature of holding census every 10 years uninterruptedly. The Census of India provides the most complete and continuous demographic record of population. The first census after independence was held in 1951. The study of population is important for several reasons in overall study of economic development. 
इंफॉर्मेशन ऑफ डेमोग्राफिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स इंक्लूड बर्थ एंड डेथ फर्टिलिटी सेक्स रेशियो एज कॉम्पोजिशन माइग्रेशन एंड लिटरेसी एक्सेट्रा द इकनॉमिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ पॉपुलेशन आर मैनिफेस्टेड थ्रू वर्कर्स पार्टिसिपेशन इन इकनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज इट्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ वर्कर्स इन वेरियस ऑक्यूपेशन एम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट सेंसस ऑफ इंडिया इज रिलेटेड विद इंडियन पॉपुलेशन स्टेटिस्टिक्स कलेक्टेड इन फर्स्ट ईयर ऑफ एवरी डिकेड इट एज कलेक्टिंग पॉपुलेशन सेंसस फ्राम एंड लेटेस्ट सेंसस वॉज मेड इन टू थाउजेंड इलेवन इट प्रोवाइड द कम्प्लीट काउंट ऑफ ऑल द पीपल अलाइव ऑन अ पर्टिकुलर डे इट ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड इंफॉर्मेशन रिगार्डिंग एज सेक्स ऑक्यूपेशन एक्सेट्रा नाउ इट इज बींग कलेक्टेड एंड प्रोसेस्ड इन द ईयर टू थाउजेंड इलेवन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया कंडक्ट दिस सर्वे अंडर द चेयरमैनशिप ऑफ सेंसस कमिश्नर ऑफ इंडिया He appoints superintendent of census operation in each state and district census officer in each district. Census operation is conducted by the educated class of the country. A greater degree of sophistication is adopted in collection, presentation and analysis of statistical data. Population census 2001 was presented on 00.00 hour. on 1st march 2001 however actual counting was done from feb 9 to 28th feb 2001 by about 20 lakh enumerator data collected in 2011 has not been processed so far most of the data processing was made through computers features of census in india Population census in India take place on the first year of every decade. It is conducted by government of India which provides published data. It provides data of head counting, age, sex, literacy, occupation, density of population etc. Population census is collected by most educated enumerators. The collected data is authentic and further quoted as a full proof information. total population is counted for a well defined point of time next we come to national sample survey organization that is nsso the national sample survey nss initiated in the year 1950 is a nationwide large scale continuous survey operation conducted in the form of successive rounds it was established on the basis of a proposal from professor P C Mahalanobis to fill up data gap for socio economic planning and policy making through sample surveys on march 1970 the nss was recognized and all aspects of its work were brought under a single government organization namely the national sample survey organization under the overall direction of a governing council to impart objectivity and autonomy in the matter of collection processing and publication of the nss data the government council consists of 18 experts from within and outside government and is headed by an eminent economist or statistician and the member secretary of the council is director general and chief executive officer of nsso The governing council is empowered to take all technical decision in respect of survey work from planning of survey to release of survey results. The NSSO headed by a director general and chief executive officer has four divisions namely survey design and research division field operation division data processing division and coordination publication division a deputy director general heads each division except field operation division and additional director general heads field operation division functions of nsso first collection of statistical data it collects data on continuing and country wide basis relating to demographic condition prices areas and yield of different crops etc second 
to conduct social and economic surveys. It conducts social economic random sample surveys relate with population, wages, etc. Collection of data on social economic conditions, production of small scale household enterprises, consumption, etc. On continuous basis of the comprehensive manner for whole country. A major objective of NSS has been to provide data required to fill up the gaps in information needed for estimation of national income. Third function, technical guidance for agricultural surveys. It coordinates crop estimation surveys on principal crops in different states and provide technical guidance for ad hoc surveys. Fourth, collection of industrial statistics. It conducts annual surveys and related inquiries in the organized industrial sector with a view to study the investment, employment, potential consumption, etc. However, the activities of NSSO are organized by an independent government, counsel, government council consisting of 15 members. The head of the organization is the chief director assisted by 14 other directors. The total number of employees working in NSSO offices are 8,000 with 170 regional offices throughout the country. The NSSO took a forward view of the data requirements to planners, research workers and other users and draw up a long term program. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos.